Hi again, everybody, and welcome to the Ingalls Furman Radio Network preview of this Saturday's matchup between the Furman Paladins and the Sanford Bulldogs. Furman back in Southern Conference play for the remainder of the regular season here in 2022. And uh, it begins with the first home game since September the 1st, the opener against North Greenville. I'm Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins, looking forward to joining you as always from the booth with David Cobb, Marcus McMorris, and Tom Van Hoy as we will bring you the call of the game on Saturday afternoon. It is a a game that, if the weather forecast holds true, is going to be marked by wind and rain. The residual effects from Hurricane Ian, which has had such devastating uh, effects on the folks down in the Gulf Coast of Florida especially. So our thoughts and prayers continue to be with them and anybody anywhere who's been affected by this. The good news is, from our standpoint, somewhat selfishly, Friday is supposed to be the day that we have the worst of the rain and the wind. Saturday there's supposed to still be some, but it's not supposed to be quite as bad. I will tell you up front, that if you are planning to come to campus, and we still hope you're going to be here because it's family weekend, because of the the wind that is uh, in the forecast for Saturday, they have made the decision that there will be no tents allowed anywhere uh, on campus. So the, the tailgating, the other tents that are normally outside, the student tents on the hillside, all of that will be uh, removed for this game because of the potential for some still high gusting winds from time to time. So if you're coming to campus, please keep that in mind that no tents will be allowed this weekend. Hopefully things are back to normal when we return home in a couple of weeks, but that's something that uh, we, we thought that we needed to pass along to you as we get this thing underway. Furman, of course, coming off of a 24-19 Uh, win at Charleston Southern last week, a game that was a lot closer than many people thought, and a game that I think uh, probably in the long run is going to end up being a good thing for Furman, because in talking with uh, a couple of the coaches, talking with some of the players, and Wyatt Hughes, the, the offensive lineman, even mentioned it in the press conference on Monday after the game that uh, the team was a little bit mentally flat and and thought to a certain degree that maybe they were just going to roll in against a winless uh, Charleston Southern team and and roll up a big win and get out of town, and and that certainly did not happen. I had to really buckle down, especially in the second half. Finally got the running game going. Jace Wilson coming off the bench and playing well in place of the injured Tyler Huff, and the Paladins get the win 24-19. So as you flash forward to this one, you've got a Samford team that's also 3-1. and They're ranked in the top 25 of both polls that we pay attention to at the FCS level. The Paladins are still right on the outside looking in in the uh, receiving votes category. So a win in this one today really serves a big purpose for both of these teams it, it, it is kind of a, uh, a win that would establish Sanford as a legitimate, a legitimate top 25 team. It would get Furman, no doubt, into the top 25 after two weeks ago beating then number 18 ETSU. So this is a big game. Of course, you're, you're talking about uh, a, a league game and, and wanting to control your own destiny as far as the FCS playoffs, not going – into a situation where you you don't win the conference, get the auto bid, and have to put yourself in the uh, the hands, your fate in the hands of a group of people, as we like to say, that go behind closed doors and call themselves a committee. So you want to win this outright. A win for Furman, of course, would get them at 2-0 and uh, on the season in the league. We take a look at the Southern Conference standings right now. The Paladins, Chattanooga, Mercer, and this Sanford club all – 1 and 0 in the league, Citadel 1 and 1. VMI is yet to play a league game. Western with their loss to Sanford last week 0 and 1, Wofford 0 and 1 and ETSU 0 and 2 in the league. So as you can see, with still a lot of league play ahead of us, getting off to the 2 and 0 start and getting a win over Sanford this week would be huge for 
Clay Hendricks and his firm in Paladins. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a minute. The series history, 25th meeting between these teams. Furman has a 13-11 all-time lead and has won each of the last three. You can see there, including both of the games that were played in the calendar year of 2021, the spring season, which of course ended in overtime here at Paladin Stadium, forcing a fumble and recovering it to seal that victory. And then last year, the 41-34 win down in Birmingham where Samford scored late to kind of close that margin up a little bit. Bulldogs won in 17 and 18 the first two years of Clay Hendricks' tenure, but he has won three straight in that series, and the last ten times these teams have met, the series is tied at five games apiece. Taking a look at some of the numbers comparison between the clubs, you you see the uh, points per game, Furman at almost 29 and the Bulldogs at almost 24. Rushing yards, the Paladins have a decided advantage there. The passing yardage advantage Bulldogs, it's not a huge advantage. Furman with uh, almost 100 yards total offense per game more than Samford. They throw the ball all over the place. That is not unusual for a Chris Hatcher team. 12 touchdown passes for Michael Ayers, their starting quarterback, and he's only thrown one pick on the season. They're not going to do, or at least they haven't, uh, a great deal in the running game when it comes to scoring production, just the single touchdown. And if you look down some of the other defensive numbers, the Paladins have a, um, a, a good advantage in defense there. That total defense number, by the way, is wrong. Some of those defensive numbers, in fact, on that graphic as I'm looking at them for Furman are wrong. The Paladins only allowing 330 yards per game total defense, 198 passing and 132 uh, on the ground. Those are right. It's just that total defense number is uh, incorrect. But the, that's a look at it. The other number that kind of jumps off the page is the turnover margin, where despite turning it over four times last week, Furman is still plus six in the turnover margin. And they have eight interceptions defensively. And we mentioned that Michael Ayers has only thrown one pick this season to go along with 12 touchdown passes. So it's going to be a pretty good battle. Uh, Chris Hatcher's teams, you know, they're going to, again, throw it all over the place. It's a quick-hitting passing game. The one thing that they may not have this year as compared to previous years is, is that one guy who is an explosive, big play, downfield threat where they'll either send him on the fly pattern or maybe they'll try to get it to him in space and expect him to be able to break it and, and take it the distance. They have guys capable of making big plays, but not the super explosive really elusive guy but when you start to look at some of their numbers they have two receivers in Chandler Smith and Kendall Watson with 18 catches apiece and Judd Crockett with 12 Ty King with 13 so four receivers with at least 12 receptions on the season and Chandler Smith has been kind of the favorite target when it comes to scoring time for Michael Ayers, uh, six of his 12 touchdown passes have gone to Chandler Smith. When you look at what Sanford does defensively, mentioned that they're giving up 430 yards a game on defense, and uh, they have been susceptible to the pass, 273 and a half yards there. So to be intriguing to see how the Paladins attack this, and it would be so on a, a normal day where the weather was good because of uh, Jace Wilson starting in place of the injured Tyler Huff. Jace on the season has completed uh, 62.5% of his passes, 15 out of 24, 186, a touchdown and a pick. Does have three rushing touchdowns. He uh, obviously gets to start in this game. But with the weather conditions, talking to Justin Roper, the offensive coordinator, earlier in the week, was telling me that it's it's not so much the wet ball that is going to bother Furman unless you happen to have a, a quarterback with a really small hand. The bigger issue is the wind and, and how that's going to affect the passing game. So when you start looking at which team runs the football better and the expected conditions weather-wise, 
you would tend to think, okay, maybe Furman's got an advantage because of the way they can run the football. I asked Clay Hendricks that question earlier this week, and he said, you know, I've always come to find out that the team that has the advantage is whoever thinks they have an advantage. In other words, if Sanford thinks that a slick field is going to benefit them, they're going to think they have the advantage. If Furman thinks that because uh, of their ability to run the football, they have an advantage, in their mind, they'll be the ones that have the advantage. Obviously, the conditions will be the same for both. We'll see how it all plays out. But taking care of the football, which is huge in every game, is going to be even more highlighted in a game where you have wind and rain as part of the process. The other games in the league this week, there is one error on this graphic because Chattanooga ETSU was moved to Thursday, but everything else, Mercer or Wofford, 130. Uh, Citadel and Appalachian State at 3.30 VMI getting into conference play against Western Carolina at 3.30 p.m. You know, you go back to the the uh, game last week between Samford and Western Carolina, it, just a, a statistical anomaly. Western had over 30 first downs in that game, had six trips inside the red zone, and did not score a touchdown in that game. Rolled up yards all over the place but could not get in the end zone against this Samford defense. Uh, They are uh, allowing in 19 opposition red zone trips only seven touchdowns through their first four games. But again, inside those numbers, Western Carolina alone was 0 for 6. The Furman defense, on the other hand, from a red zone standpoint, has only allowed nine red zone trips all season long through four games to the opposition, and five of those were against Clemson, who went 5-for-5. Opponents are 8 out of 9, 7 out of 9 in scoring touchdowns, but just two red zone trips on average per game allowed by this Furman defense, and again, five of those were against Clemson. The the thing that Dwayne Vaughn and I talked about prior to the game this week was cleaning up the execution that has allowed three big plays in the last two games, a 75-yard touchdown pass against ETSU, the 97-yard touchdown pass against Charleston Southern last week, and then the 82-yard run that set up a field goal for uh, the Buccaneers last week. So uh, looking at film, talking about what they can do to execute better and clean those things up, that's been kind of the focus. Outside of that, this defense continues to play very, very well. We've talked about the depth on the defensive side. Well, that depth is going to be tested this week when you tune in to the Pepsi Countdown to kickoff. You'll hear more specifically why that's going to be the case moving forward uh, on the defensive side of the football, uh, in some cases for the season, in other cases for the next few weeks. But we hope that you will tune in to the Pepsi Countdown to kick off. We will get things underway at 12.30 p.m. on the Fan Upstate, 97.7 FM in Greenville, 97.1 in Spartanburg, and online uh, on odyssey.com and the Odyssey app. Just search the Fan Upstate. Perfectly good signal if you come to the ballpark and want to bring your radio with you or the stadium and want to bring your radio with you. You can do so and listen to the game as it happens in real time. And uh, we look forward to having you along for our 90-minute pregame show, the Pepsi Countdown to kickoff. We'll kick it off at 2 p.m. and uh, see how this one plays out, again, with some expected inclement weather between Furman and Sanford on Saturday afternoon here at Paladin Stadium. Again, 12.30 airtime, 2 p.m. kickoff for this matchup, and we look forward to having you along for the ride with us. Love to have you here. If you can't make it because of the weather or anything else, then tune in. It's also available, of course, on ESPN+, and uh, we've got you covered any way you need to catch the game. We'll see you then. Talk to you from the booth on Saturday. Until then, for all of us here at Furman, I'm Dan Scott, as always, saying God bless you. So long, everybody.